Welcome to Kids Speak Out. We're glad to have you with us. We're continuing our discussion about how the coronavirus is affecting our feelings. And we're very lucky today to have Dr. Joshua Weiner, a child psychiatrist very well known across the country, who's going to help answer some of our questions and maybe shed some light on some things you might be thinking about. Let's find out who's with us again today. Hi, my name is Matias. I'm nine and I live in Florence in Italy. Let's go to Monte Carlo. Hi, my name is Thais. I'm 10 and then I'm from Monte Carlo. Hi, my name is Lucas. I'm 11, uh, I'm 11 years old. Hi, my name is Cal. I'm 10 years old and I'm from Mill Valley, California. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I'm 17 and I live in Stratford upon Avon. Hi, my name is Olivia and I'm 17 and I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm 15 and I live in Los Angeles, California. Hi, I'm Grayson. I'm 13 and I live in Gatorsburg, Maryland. Hi, my name's Felipe. I'm 15 and I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Hi, I'm Oliver and I'm 15 years old and live in Los Angeles, California. Yes. What really annoys you about this whole experience? Or is there anything? Maybe you don't have anything that bothers you. Um, the thing that bothers me the most is that we can't see our friends. Have you seen any of your friends in any way? Do you, uh, do you have any way of connecting with them, a phone? Yeah. Or um, I've seen them a lot th with Zoom and Google Classroom. That's another app like the Zoom. Or I've had some friends at my house. And, and I think you told me that you also play the, one of the games, Fortnite, right? Yeah, I did. Anybody else play Fortnite? Anybody ever heard of it? Okay. I play similar. Yeah? I used to, but I, I don't play anymore that much. Well, Lucas, what are you and Thais, do you, you have been lucky to have a brother and sister together. In fact, most of you, I guess, have siblings, but <laughs> do you find that you like them more now because they're the only friend around or, or less because they're around too much? Sometimes less, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes less, sometimes more. Play in the pool. We play and together in the pool and sometimes they're just good to me. But really. Well, I guess in the south of France, you've probably been able to stay out in the pool quite often, huh? The weather's really good there. Yeah. Here in Washington, we're not sure whether it's winter or spring yet, but it's, it looks like spring. We've got the leaves all coming out. And that's another thing, Dr. Weiner. I think that all of us, when we see how beautiful it is outside, we feel like we're locked in our homes and, and can't enjoy it. We're going to miss a whole season. I know, it's really unfortunate. I mean, I do think that it's possible, though, to try to get outside as much as you possibly can. I think as long as you're taking necessary safety precautions, I don't really see why there would be an issue with going out for a walk, or going out for a bike ride or a jog, just making sure that you're staying clear of people, maybe wearing a mask, and enjoying the outdoors. I certainly see a lot of people doing it around where I live. Now, granted, I'm right now coming to you from Louisiana, where the weather is warm, so it's been beautiful. People are out walking and doing things outside. But I think even in the D.C. area, you still can enjoy it. It's not quite the same, obviously, but there's still time and opportunity to be outside. Um, yeah, I just had a question for Dr. Josh. Um, I know some people that can be quite affected, like their mental health, especially by not being able to see other people and going out and doing things that you normally would do. So I was just wondering if there's any advice that you could give um, to those people who are kind of struggling with their like mental health right now well it's just, i think i think that uh you always want to do the most you can just to just listen right because if you're talking to a friend and they're telling you that they're really struggling with something my general advice for the most part is to recognize that you're probably not going to be able to solve their problem for them right and generally speaking a lot of people don't even want you to try to solve their problem they just want to vent so they just want to talk about how bored and how lonely they are and how anxious and upset they are and oftentimes if the best thing you can do for that person is to just do what we call reflective listening. It's just a fancy term for listening to that person, 
really asking them questions, trying to understand as much as you can about their situation, and then sort of reflecting it back and saying to them, hey, this is what I think I'm hearing you say, and you can maybe share if you feel somewhat the same way, but oftentimes that's going to be the best way to make them feel like they've been heard and understood. I don't think, certainly I don't think it's the responsibility of you to try to solve your friend's problem. I think if you can identify with them and you sort of are feeling the same way, oftentimes people do feel better if they hear that they're not in the boat alone. And you can say, yeah, I'm sort of having a tough time with that as well. But in general, making your focus be understanding and listening is going to be your best bet. I think Cal has a question. Um, I do think that, like, since now that I'm spending more time with my siblings, it's getting very annoying because, like, we're, like, pushing each other's nerves that, like, we're, we're gonna get mad at each other because like we're spending too much time together which normally does not happen so yeah it's pretty weird my main piece of advice i think you're not alone with that a lot of people are getting annoyed by their siblings i know there's plenty of fighting going on between my kids in this house but one of the things you might be able to do is just try to have some structured activities. Maybe you guys can all sit around together and come up with some ideas for some things that you could do that would be uh, enjoyable for all of you. Maybe picking up some uh, board games or some activity or some craft activity or something like that, watching movies, things where you can actually do stuff as a group where you're not going to be at each other's throats and you're just going to be trying to do the same thing with each other at the same time for something that's mutually agreed upon so everybody's having a good time and then maybe saying to each other hey look i love you but you're really being difficult it's really hard to hang out with you all day do you mind just giving me an hour so i could just go in my room and just listen to some music or chill out and just please don't bother me for the next hour i think most people are going to understand that yeah, i'd like to find out what everybody wants to do or wishes they could do right now that they miss the most let's just go through the uh, through the gallery you want to tell us, Grayson, what you'd like to be doing? I would really like to be playing football right now. Uh, I really miss uh, skateboarding with uh, my friend Timo, which we can't do anymore. But sometimes we uh, FaceTime each other and uh, we teach each other how to do different tricks. And, uh, but I miss going to the skate park with my friends. Oh, your skating park. I heard that. You, you like to um, rollerblade, right? No, skateboard. Oh, skateboard, excuse me. So you, and there's a roller, uh, uh, a skateboard park that you go to and you can't go there now? Yeah, I can't go there anymore. The one in uh, Monaco, I can't go there. And the one here in Mujan, uh, I can't go there either. I guess they're closed because of the quarantine, huh? the social distancing. Yes. But did you, did you have some place that you can do your uh, skateboarding uh, alone? Yeah, yeah, we built a, I built a skate park in the driveway here. But it's not the same so, as friends, huh? No, it's not the same. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to play football with my uh, friends, but I can still play football, but with my dad and not with my friends. Now, football for you is soccer, right? Yeah. So, soccer, and you're on a, on a major team in your, your uh, area, right? Yeah. Riley, what would you like to be doing and what will you be doing as soon as this is all over? Um, as soon as this is over, hopefully my daily routine goes back to normal. And I just really wish that um, I can get my learner's permit for driving because I recently just turned 15 and a half and have finished my driving course. Um, but unfortunately, the DMV is closed. So I'm waiting for it to back to op back open again um, so I can get that. Uh, Oliver? Um, I am, yeah, definitely. The first thing I'm excited about is uh, getting to hang out with friends again and like getting to see them in person and not on a phone or a... Uh... Oh, Matthias, have you told us what you'd like to do? Yeah, um, I, I played for uh, my soccer team but now I can't do it anymore because we were 40, so it's closed now.
they can't I think you make them. a good point, Barbara, and that is that uncertainty is really hard for a lot of people, right? Every, in general, people do better when they have some clear direction, they know what to expect, and when they're in a routine. That doesn't apply to everybody, but I do think that that's the vast majority of people. They do better when they know those things. And so that's one thing that right now we just don't have available to us. So everybody's just trying to make do, doing the best they can, hopefully trying to maintain some sort of normalcy and routine, but these are strange times. They certainly are. Now, do you have any questions for each other or for the doctor? Did anyone have to celebrate their birthdays during quarantine? It was a week ago today, so I had my hey. friends all on FaceTime saying happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, it was really good not seeing anyone for my birthday. My, my best friend had his birthday um, during, during the quarantine, so I couldn't see him for his birthday. So I'm wondering, guys, if there's anything that has happened during this period of quarantine that you hope continues after the quarantine ends. Uh, yeah, I hope we can still, like, we can still learn from home, like, online, because it's better. Because you don't need to go every day to school and change every day into your school uniforms if you need them. And so you don't need to go there and then come back home. That's funny that you. That's funny that you say that because my son, since this experience, has been saying, "See, Dad, I've been asking to do homeschooling because this works out great." So I don't think you're. You're certainly not alone. There are some other kids who share that. Opinion. Charlotte, what about you? Um. Yeah. So there's been kind of in the UK, like that I've noticed. There's been a lot of like especially like unity and like togetherness surrounding the whole like coronavirus thing. So I hope that that kind of continues rather than the division that's. Yeah, um, I think that for the people who have cars, we'll save them gas, the money. Cause they don't have to drive around. So, I mean, you're saving money. Well, that's a good point. So like driving your kids to school, or like driving yourself to school, you use up gas and gas costs money. Like you wouldn't have to pay that like money. So Cal, would you like to see that continue and not have to go to school again and, and just uh, continue to save money on the gas? Yeah. <laughs> and the energy that usually cars use are not renewable. So once it's finished, it's finished. Anybody else with something to say about what they'd like to see continue uh, when this is all over? Since we've had a lot of pollution, um, I think this is like, I think it's a good time for like the earth to heal, like to get better um, without having all that pollution. So like driving a car, pollution. So um, like, I think it helps. You know, one thing I'd say is one of my, you know, it's been a little bit of a pet peeve of mine over the years, especially with what I see in my practice, is everybody's just so busy, with so many activities, families are running around in general so often that people are just ships passing in the night. And, you know, one parent's taking one kid to one sport activity, another is taking their kid to another activity. And one thing that I do hope happens is that people sort of reevaluate their priorities. And maybe now that they've had some time to slow down and been forced to sort of get back to the basics, that maybe some people are gonna decide, you know what, life's a little calmer and a little nicer when we're not running around all the time. Maybe we can decide that there are some things that we could just let go of. You know, I think that's a great idea. And I have to say, when I walk out in the streets of Washington, D.C., and not have to see all that traffic, it makes me think, hey, you know, we, we could live with this a little bit longer. You know, Barbara, I'm curious. That, you know, one thing that a lot of people talk about is that anxiety is on the rise um, and that a lot of kids are experiencing anxiety during this period of time. And as I mentioned earlier, it just kind of doesn't necessarily match the experience that I've been seeing with my patients in my practices as I've spoken with them. And I'm wondering with the kids, with all of you guys, maybe if you could just give a quick answer, maybe on a one to 10 scale. If 10 is the most anxious you could possibly imagine being, and one is the exact opposite, you feel pretty relaxed. What number would you give yourselves during this period of time? Anybody want to start? 
It looks like, oh, I think Grayson, Grayson, what number would you be? I would say seven. So seven. That's pretty high. It's pretty high. You're pretty nervous. Pretty anxious, Maybe. huh? Yeah, because I don't have nothing to do. Like, I, I have to do stuff, and I've just been lazy. I don't like being lazy. That's a good point. I mean, I think some people really do need to have some structure, right? Absolutely. I think that for a lot of people, just uh, downtime, you know, they say uh, idle idle time makes is not good for the brain, right? A lot of times when people are just sitting around, their brain just sort of naturally goes to some anxieties and worries. So a lot of times people feel better the busier they are. Lucas and Thais. Uh, me, one out of ten, because I'm not really stressed about it, and just, because we're in our home, our weekend home, and we're, we're having fun. And I would give it, uh, maybe a four, because sometimes I'm a bit stressed, uh, with the schoolwork, but otherwise, other than that, uh, I don't think there's anything that's stressing me out so much. I don't think. Anybody else want to weigh in on the stress level? I'd say like a seven, six, but like I'm usually a 10, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So this is an improvement from where you normally would be. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Charlotte, did you have a, a, a number that you'd like to uh, uh, claim? I think probably like a three or a four, I'd say. Because obviously this is the time where I'd usually be doing revision for exams and things. So to not have those exams at kind of like the end of the holidays is a bit, I feel like I should be doing something, but obviously I don't have to. So. Well, it's a nice, comfortable time, right? I mean, you're able to enjoy not having to be stressed out about uh, schoolwork. Anybody else? Okay, Riley. Um, I'd say socially, I'm at like a one because just nothing's really going on to like be social, like anxious about. Um, but I'd say for schoolwork, I'd probably, I'm probably a seven because just communicating with teachers over email and like over Zoom classes, it's just, it's really stressful for me just because I, I don't know, I just like to be in person. And for me, it's like I need that, that contact to know that I have like their full attention and just all of that. Good point. Matthias, I think you're ready to say something else and then we'll get to you, Cal, in just a second. Matthias? Um, I give myself a two because only the homework is a little bit stressful for the rest um i'm pretty calm and cal what about you um i'm not only stressed but i'm pretty sad since i'm leaving schools and i won't get to see my friends for like two months so it's really sad Sadness, I guess, doctor, is something that we have to all deal with. There is some sad element, but uh, as I said, as I look outside and I see how beautiful it is and I don't hear a lot of traffic, that makes me happy. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some nice aspects to this, but I don't want to make it seem obviously like this is rosy in any way because, you know, obviously with all of, the, all of us who are participating in today's discussion it doesn't sound like there's anyone who's dealing with any major health issues in their family uh, nobody's mentioned one of their parents losing their jobs or not being able to afford some of the basic necessities that they have so obviously there are definitely people out there who are really really struggling right now so i don't by any means want to minimize the challenge that some families are facing but I do think there are many families where, you know, there are some nice things that are occurring with this as well. So I think we shouldn't focus entirely on the negative. We shouldn't focus entirely on the positive. Finding, you know, there's a mix, right, with everything, good and bad with everything. And I think one of the most wonderful things about this, if, if we can say there's anything wonderful about going through this experience, is that we are finding that around the world, we are so much more alike than we realized. I mean, I think we're all seeing that, uh, hey, 
I'm hearing him say that he's feeling the same thing I'm feeling. There's something good, there's something bad. We, we really have a lot in common, no matter what language we speak. And are we like glad that so many of them speak English? I wish I could speak French or Italian or, or Portuguese uh, so that I could speak with you in your native tongues. But uh, wow, everybody really speaks English so well, don't they, doctor? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what, Barbara, one of the things I've been recommending to some of my patients who are bored is I say, hey, why don't you learn a language? Now's a perfect time to <laughs> sort of practice brushing up on your Spanish or French or something like that that maybe you haven't taken since you were a young kid. That's a great idea. Well, uh, does anybody have anything else they want to say? Any thoughts you'd like to leave us with? One more thing. Let's sing happy birthday to That's Charlotte. Since she Wait, Grayson, was it your birthday too? Oh, did, was it Grayson's birthday? When yeah. Was, when was your my, birthday? My birthday was March 28th. Oh, wow. Well, we, we have a couple of birthdays that we have to uh, acknowledge then. And so neither of you had a party beyond, I guess, your families at home. Me too. It was my birthday, the 26th of March, so we couldn't do it. Wow. Well, Dr. Weiner, shall we sing? <laughs> okay. You want to lead? Your voice is probably better than mine. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. So happy birthday to everyone who might be celebrating out there. We're glad you're with us and hope you'll plan to join us again for our next edition of Kids Speak Out. Don't forget, you can find out how you can participate in a lot of different ways with our program. Go to kidsspeakout.me. We'll see you soon.